and you uh, never good. Yeah, and uh, you you lose your wife, and you uh, early on you learn that uh, these people living there think the ends of times are coming, and your wife has something to do with it. And oh no! <laughs> immediately, immediately, like Outlast fans are like, this is it's already so crazy because we did not have too many outdoor environments. I mean, you start the game, there's a few right. points where you go from like building to building. Um, and I don't think Whistleblower had any outdoor environment. So this is a totally yeah. like a new approach. Yeah, we didn't want the, the sequel to feel like just a longer DLC. So we wanted to give players something new. And we're going to mix up environments a lot more than we did in the first game. So more open in environments. Uh, but we're still going to have corridors, Win. and uh, the whole game will feel like uh, just one big descent into Win. hell. Awesome. And immediately it looks fantastic, by the Thank way. You. So great, <laughs> great work on that. So, uh, I mean, uh, the other big thing, if I'm uh, a, a player from the first game, uh, I noticed that, like, I don't necessarily have uh, my, I guess, my ally throughout the whole thing, which is a I'm camera. Lost. Do I have anything similar in this game, or will yes. be experiencing the game totally differently? No, the core, the core gameplay is pretty much the same as the first one. Okay. Uh, we added a few things here and there, of course, to keep it fresh. But uh, at its core, it's a, a game of exploration, running and hiding, and <laughs> looking for batteries. Yeah, no, I was yes, going to say yes. looking for batteries. Okay. Night. There we go. I was waiting <laughs> for it. That's how I spent almost the entire go. damn game. <laughs> the night vision. Now, you also know, gamers, 60, 60 <laughs> FPS camera 60 there. 60 FPS, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah, for you guys. Yep. It's not yeah. the same camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, we got a battery worst, right away. The worst right. thing in the last game was was bed hiding. Oh, we're still <laughs> going to have that. And actually, this time, it's going to be fully analog. So you're oh, you know, the first game. It was okay. uh, digital. You, know, you you were either under the bed or oh, you weren't. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This one, you're more in control oh. of your movements, but it also means that you may not be fully hidden. Maybe your legs. And oh, legs. don't tell me. Who's? <laughs> oh, that first one oh, yeah. freaked me out. They know you're there. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to play this. So I mean, like, and this character's coming in with no previous knowledge of what has happened. So as a player, we sort of have this Jesus. unique, like, okay, we know. What this game no. is going to deliver, but we also get to experience the fact that the play or the the character, right, that we play. Yeah, that's something. Know. That's something that's really important uh, to us. I think it helps immersion to uh, know as much as your uh, character, sure, as little as your character, and uh, discover everything at the same time. And actually, one difference is uh, in this game, the character is going to talk. Uh, oh, okay. So okay. It's not, it's not going to be like he's always so talking all the time. You no, know, we don't want the player to go uh, shut the hell up. Uh. <laughs> right, 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 right. But we're, us we're using it as a narrative tool uh, to give more information uh, to, uh, to the player. Do you, do you feel like that g gave you guys a bit more freedom to tell the story you wanted to tell? Uh, was that limiting in, in Outlast 1? Yeah, I mean, from the first Outlast to the DLC, we, we, uh, we worked harder on the story. And people seem to enjoy it, so this time we're, uh, we're going uh, with a very much uh, deeper uh, storyline. And the first one was more like very in-your-face visual horror. Right. And we're still going to do that, but we wanted to add layers of depth and, uh, and really mess with the player's mind. I also noticed the camera had a decibel reader on it, and I just I, I see that I'm like, well, there's no way that's not going to come into play. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, oh my god! I can't wait to I, I can't <laughs> wait to not be able to see anything, and then use yep. the sound. Yes, yep. yes, exactly. Uh, are there no, any? Uh, oh, so, no, sorry, I've been no, I've it, been hogging. I just want to know. I, I, it's all good. It's all so good. So excited. I know. I, I feel you. I played the I played through the first game, and I absolutely loved it. Is uh, without giving away too much detail, is it going to push the limits of, like, well, not only fear, but, like, of, like, I don't know, like, push the envelope of yeah. a, of a uh, we're mature enjoyment? Yeah. I mean, uh, there are some things we're going to do in the game that, uh, as far as I know, nobody has done before, and I'm really eager to see how people are going to react to those. Because uh, I remember the first one, I was talking to you backstage yeah. about the first one, there was a couple moments where I was not only scared, but there was a couple moments where I was like, oh! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we like to make players suffer. Good. Oh, my <laughs> God, there it is. There's something that... There we go. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get... You're going to definitely... Ask and you shall receive. I mean, between Outlaw, we had not only, like you mentioned, in-your-face visceral scares, uh, a deep and rich environment that had a lot of ambience to it. One of my favorite, and, and literally the reason why I felt like it, it deserved Game of the Year that year, is, like, there is a specifically a chase sequence that is almost orchestrated in this way where 
um, I remember there's a there's a giant gap. You know exactly probably where I'm talking <laughs> about, but there's like a giant gap, and I felt like I was actually directing this movie that you put me into, in which like I was scared shitless, running down this hallway, hurtling over things, and then I remember looking back, and perfectly as I look back, this guy comes at me and I actually take two steps back because I didn't think I could make that jump <laughs> and then made the jump but it was it was that design that you know uh, that like really put me in, yeah. in the place do you feel like immersion is certainly going to take this game to the next level yeah I think it's a, it's the most important thing and on our side as designers it means that we have to cover every possible situation. So it means a lot of scripting, but I think those little, sure. things, those little details, like you just said, uh, oh, pay off. In the water! Oh, no <laughs> way. Oh, hide in the water. And no it, way. And it's uh, very clean water, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't wow. Move. Don't move, don't move, don't move. I'm not the biggest fan of water. He can hold his breath for a while. I'm yeah. a little concerned here. He's, oh. All right. What? Bubbles are coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I mean, fans have been waiting for quite a long time for the sequel. Uh, do we have a release date yet? Uh, on our side, we'll get the game done uh, this fall. Okay. Okay. But depending on when exactly it gets done, we'll see if we have time to release it before the holidays. Sure. It has to be afterwards. Okay. So you're going to keep us on the edge of our seats, but that's okay. <laughs> We're very excited uh, about everything the game is going to bring. And, you know, I, I also had to ask, from a design perspective, uh, while the outdoors probably gives you a little bit more freedom, it means that the player also has like more freedom. It's not just that hallway or that hallway. Yeah. Um, that's, not, that's probably the part that uh, was uh, the most work for, uh, for okay. us. Okay. Uh, because the, the first one was mostly about running from a one guy in a right. one corridor. And we're still going to have that, but we wanted to mix it up as much as we can so that it doesn't feel repetitive. Uh, so we worked for about a year on making those open environments uh, feel as scary as one as one corridor, and uh, I think it paid off. I mean, I, I, the way from based on the reaction I'm seeing so far, people are jumping and screaming uh, despite the noise and the light. So uh, it's really satisfying, satisfying for us. You can always go right with the cornfield too. Like that's pretty. Yeah, the I, lighting also just everything is great. Yeah, Children of the Corn was a. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> is from my home state, Nebraska, actually. <laughs> Tyler C. Skate, there we go, via Twitter. LS2 looks next level, and I agree. I, I absolutely cannot uh, wait to play this game. Anything else that uh, you know you guys have been talking to fans about or that you want the fans uh, to know about uh, as they, we prep for this release? Uh, well, I mean, like I said a bit earlier, we're really trying to create something that... The, the, the village is the, the starting point, but not, it's not the whole game. The whole game doesn't take place in the village. And uh, it's going to feel more like a, a journey, kind of like a Heart of Darkness or Apocalypse Now. Uh, the first game was more about you're stuck in this place and you have to go around and find, right, find the right. exit. This time uh, you have to uh, find your wife and it's going to feel more like a journey. Okay. And that journey will take you into madness. You just jumped in a barrel and, hi and you're hiding in a barrel. You, what is, the, who is playing this? You keep <laughs> moving, you don't Look, stop. I and oh my god, and then, and then you get that, that awful, awful red battery flash.
Lost and hurt. Is anybody there? Today, 
Thunder follow the angel. Change Babylon is fallen. Is fallen. That right said it. Because she made all nations drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. Then I look, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, saying with a loud voice, 